Hey everyone, we're down here at Middy's Narang at the moment. I uh, come in to check out the guys and uh, yeah, obviously while we're here at the moment on the Gold Coast, um, all of us and our guys, obviously we've kind of been jumping from border to border, uh, sort of in a little bit of a hub here at the moment on the Gold Coast, but uh, it's been a good opportunity to, to get some work done to the cars. Um, you know, we're, we're looking to travel into Darwin, um, I think early next week, I'm not too sure at this stage, everything keeps changing a little bit. There's a fair bit going on. Um, the truck's going to try and leave, I believe, Saturday. Um, so yeah, things are starting to get a little bit real. So really, really looking forward to going up to Darwin to head, head up there, see my family, go racing. Um, and so, yeah, can't wait, really. So Bryce, what's your preparation been like while in southeast Queensland? Uh, well, while I've been here, I haven't had that much to do. So I've pretty much just been training every morning and then uh, going to hang out with the boys, uh, working on the cars, helping swing some spanners and stuff like that. I don't really have much else to do here, so uh, you know it's been a little bit of a boring time. I guess I guess um, you know we haven't really been able to go out and do too many things. Um, supercars have tried to keep us under wraps a little bit and just try and keep us safe more than anything, and I suppose stay a little bit conservative so we can keep the show on the road. What is it? What's it going to be like getting home after so long away, getting back to Darwin and, and seeing the family and getting back into your old bedroom and things like that? Yeah, well. Funny you say that, I haven't actually been to Darwin since before Christmas actually, so really looking forward to going home and seeing my family. Um, I haven't seen my parents since uh, AGP weekend, which was March, um, but then haven't seen my wider family since yeah, before Christmas. So really excited to go home um, to get to some proper weather, even though we're, as we're working our way up the East Coast, the weather's getting better, a little bit more to what I'm kind of used to. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that, but um, yeah, can't wait to go up there and, and race in front of the home crowd. What does Middies, we're standing here in Middies, what does it mean to you, the brand and, and the people? So Middies is a, you know, a massive family business, you know, and they, it's, it's a big family, you know, like it's quite amazing how tight knit, you know, the whole company really is. Um, and I've been really fortunate that they've seen something in me um, and they've backed me for a really long time, even, you know, back to when I was in go-karts and they've helped me the whole way along into my racing car career and now into my first rookie season in, in the supercar championship. So everyone um, in the Middendorp business and, and the Middendorp family for, you know, for that matter have um, you know, been absolutely amazing to myself and my family. Um, and you know, I just absolutely would not be standing here um, without them and their support. So you know, I, can't, uh, yeah, I can't express my, um, you know, my gratitude towards them enough. Timothy wants to know if you're doing any signings or appearances in Darwin. Um, we are going to go to um, Middies, Palmerston and Walnut while we're there. But um, at this point in time, due to just the whole situation, um, you know, supercars have sort of kept us a little bit under wraps a bit and they've tried to basically say we can't really do too much, which sucks big time because I'd really love to be able to do a heap of signing sessions while I'm in Darwin and get to know a heap of people and um, you know, get to know a heap of supporters, you know, because I'm really lucky I've got a lot of supporters up there. but. Um, you know, at this point in time, it feels like I've finally made it to the main series and everything's just fallen out from under me. So, at this point in time, we can't do a lot, but we're going to do as much as we can. Uh, Cash wants to know how you're feeling about the car and, and how it's performing. Um, is it what you expected? And Yeah, so obviously, um, you know, the car is very different to what I'm used to. Um, the aero package is very different. But then again, the chassis and the way it works is also very different. Um, so, I think at this point in time, you know, we've had relatively good speed. Um, you know, I've had some really good finishes and stuff like that. Probably surprised myself a little bit. Um, but we still definitely have some work to do with the car. The car's not perfect. Um, so in one way, I'm kind of happy that we're not happy with the results we've gotten, if that makes sense. We, um, you know, I still feel like there's a lot of room for development in the car. Um, myself and Chaz, you know, I still feel like there's quite a lot to be found still. Um, you know, and I think that's a good thing. If we were both finishing where we are and that everything was all rosy, then we'd, we'd sort of be up ship creek a little bit. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think everything else is going really good and hopefully we can just keep racing and keep developing the cars. Nicole wants to know what your dream Australian muscle car is. I reckon I'm a little bit, of, I'm a fair Australian, I'll just say, I am from Darwin, but I'd have to say an LJ Tirana would be my, would be my dream Australian muscle car. Calvin wants to know how you're finding the car setup wise compared to your Super 2 from last year. Yeah, so um, the Super 2 car that um, I drove last year with MW Motorsport was absolutely hooked up. We, the boys did a really good job on that car. But the, the rules of Super 2 are frozen in 2017. So obviously the rule book changed a little bit, obviously now in, in, in 2020. So the cars have 
uh, you know, they've been developed in that time. The center of gravity is lower. Um, they're, they're slipperier from an aero point of view. So they're a little bit of a different beast. They're a faster car in general. However, the car, I think um, ergonomically, I'm really comfortable in the car and I think all their systems and whatnot work really good and I've been able to adapt to that really easy. Um, at this point in time, for me, it's just about trying to learn the car a little bit more. Um, at the last weekend at Sydney, we really threw the car around a lot and probably detuned it a little bit on the last day, but was all in, it was sort of all in favour to, to learn more going into Darwin and the following rounds. Bryce, I'd like to know how, how you and Chaz get along and what your relationship's like. Chaz is awesome. Like, um, I have to say, you know, he's sort of taken me under his wing a little bit, like, like a mentor, I guess. And the really cool thing about Chaz is he's been in the category long enough to know how it works, but, he's, but he still came through in a similar-ish time, I suppose, in the category. So he kind of knows what hurdles that I'm going to face and how, and still he remembers how he jumped them and, um, you know, he's able to sort of pass that advice on to me and there's been a lot of things that I've been a little bit uncertain about, you know, just little things like in Super 2, you know, we didn't really have too many uh, media events just before we jumped in the race car, um, you know, and it was, I sort of had to ask him at Adelaide, how long do I sort of really should I be giving myself before of my own time before I need to jump in the race car because in Super 2 I had as much time as I want. So Chaz has been really good. He's, um, you know, he's been really keen to try and help me um, with my driving and help help me perform better because, it, you know, in turn it helps us as a team. So, yeah, look, he's been absolutely awesome. What about his hair? His hair? You know, a funny thing about that, we were, doing, we were in the middle of the E-Series when he did that, as a lot of you will know. Um, and I was actually on the phone to him. I rang him and said, oh, when are you going to jump on the simulator? Because I'd been on the simulator and we usually try and tee up to jump on at similar times because we're helping each other out. And I was on the phone to him and he goes, oh, I'm on my way back home soon. I've just been and bleached my hair. And I didn't really think anything of it at the time. Um, I just was sort of like, oh, okay, fair enough. And then sure enough, when, when the coverage started and, uh, you know, actually, you know, we did our sort of pre-race checks with our video, I actually rang him and said, holy crap, you actually, you, you did bleach your hair. Um, so yeah, it's, he needs to redo it again. He's starting to get regrowth and all that kind of thing happening. I've seen uh, last weekend at Sydney, but I don't know, he's, he's a scallywag. Was it strange, uh, David's asked, was it strange getting into the cars and out of the simulator after 10 weeks of the E-Series? It was a little bit actually. Um, luckily, obviously, I had a, a rookie session to um, you know, come to terms a little bit with the car again, but in the first session, I was definitely a bit choppy. Like, the pedals in our race car are really close together um, so that we can heel and toe and we can access everything really easy. But, you know, you, if you, I suppose, not super current with the car, sometimes you can grab a little bit of throttle and stuff like that when you're on the brakes, which really gets your attention. Um, and I know that from experience, believe me. So, yeah, I was actually a little bit in all sorts in the rookie session, just grabbing a little bit of throttle in areas where I shouldn't have on the brake and stuff like that. But the funny thing was once I got out, um, we only had a 15 minute break between sessions, but when I jumped back in for the first official practice session, it was all completely gone and I was straight back to normal. So, um, yeah, it was, it was. I thought it may have affected me for longer than it did, actually. This one comes in a bit, but Matt's asked what Ryan's like as a boss. Ryan, Ryan is absolutely awesome. He's obviously pretty young and current, so I, myself and Chaz get on with him really cool. Um, he's an awesome bloke, we, uh, we give him heaps of shit. Um, and you know, he's a really good dude to, uh, to joke around with and whatnot, but he's also extremely passionate about our sport. Um, he's a super busy dude. He runs heaps of businesses behind the scenes that not a lot of people know about, um, you know, or that he doesn't, I suppose, um, portray forward with the, with the race team and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he's a really cool boss. He's a really cool guy and uh, sucks a little bit that we can't have he and Martin, um, his mum at the, at the events. They're usually there um, as well as Haley. They're usually all at the events, but um, they were all there for Adelaide and they got to enjoy um, you know, Chaz's podium, which was really cool, but unfortunately they haven't been able to come back to the events. So hopefully these things um, you know, go back to normal and we can have them back at the events. What was your favourite win last year in the Super 2 car? Um, this might be controversial. <laughs> My favourite win was Bathurst. Um, obviously I actually came second in the end, but um, that was a really cool event for me. Uh, just on a personal level, I feel like I really sort of tapped into something that weekend that I didn't really know I had. Um, so that was probably my, my most favourite. I guess I crossed the line first, but I, I got the second place trophy to back it up. But, but um, look, obviously, probably my most special win would have been Adelaide, my first win, because, you know, there's been so much hard work that's gone on behind the scenes. And, you know, we had, we've had a little bit of a tough trot, to, you know, before last year. Um, and, you know, 
it's really hard to sort of get everything together and um, give yourself the best opportunity in this sport. And um, you know, we managed to do that last year in Super Two, and so that first race at Adelaide was was pretty good. This one's come through a couple of times. What advice have you got to to the young kids out there who are just starting or want to get into motorsport and, and end up in supercars? You got any advice for them? Yeah, go karting, guys. Go karting, go karting, go karting. Go karting is where you learn everything. Um, you know, like in a go kart, you can go forward five or six spots, ten spots in one lap, and you can go backwards ten spots in one lap if you're not on it. So your race craft is super important, and you learn that in a go kart. Even just your raw speed, because the go-kart is so much more basic, there's a lot less variables that contribute to whether you're fast or not. In a race car, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things going on um, that you have to sort of, I guess, know about and think about while you're driving the car to work out what's sort of happening. In a go-kart, it's really raw. Um, it's the most raw form of racing you can get. Um, and if you can, if you can drive a go-kart and you know be competitive, you might not have the fastest engine or the newest go-kart, but if you want it bad enough and uh, you put that put the effort in, you know you mightn't you mightn't win every event because you don't have all the best equipment like everyone else, but you'll certainly be able to run up the front and you'll get plenty of trophies. So that'd be my advice. I did a lot of go karting and it served me really really well. Who uh, who was your idol growing up? For me, I sort of had two idols growing up, um, and it was both Jamie Winkup and Craig Lowndes, and for two reasons. Craig, I thought, just the whole way through his career has been absolutely awesome with the fans and I really respected how, no matter what kind of day he had in the race car, he always had time for his fans um, and made everyone feel really loved, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, and then Jamie, because of the hard work that he's put in behind the scene, and he's just, he really, really grinded away for a really long time. You know, it's, it's really hard when you've had a lot of success you know, the only place you can kind of go is down and you have to work three times harder to stay where you are. Um, and so I've really respected that he's a really hardcore racer and he's had a bit of criticism over the time, but he just hasn't really let it get to him and he's just all about going racing and winning races. So, yeah, I think for me, I'd love to try and be the mix of both of those guys, but um, who knows, I'll try my best. Uh, Nick Collins actually wants to know what your goals are for the Darwin events. Oh, hello, Mr. Nick Collins. I'm in one of your fancy uh, pink stores. Um, <laughs> Look, for me and Darwin, you know, we're trying to, um, obviously, we're, we're trying to learn a little bit about the car. So we've made a few new bits and pieces that I hope are going to make it on the car for Darwin, but I, I have no idea at this point. But um, for me, I would love to get, I'd love to get in the top 10, um, but anywhere between top 10 and top 15 um, in that window would be absolutely awesome for me. And as a rookie, I think that'd be a great goal. So it's one of them things we've sort of got to wait and see how we end up after practice um, and, and see, kind of reassess what the goals are going to be. But um, we had a, a pretty successful two race weekends in Sydney. So um, without counting, counting our chickens before they hatch, hopefully um, we can replicate that and have a really, you know, another two really strong weekends. And a question that might have come from behind me as well. Uh, how do you strategize your next win? How do you work towards that? Do I, how do I strategize my next win? Um, look, it's, uh, first I've got to beat Chaz because I need pit priority over him. Um, but like, look, obviously there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, you know, obviously the team, my team did an absolutely ripper job um, over the last weekend in Sydney with their pit stops. So that's one thing that needs to be right. So they've ticked that. Um, the second thing is I need to be doing a good job, which I think I did half okay in Sydney. So that was cool. The third thing is we need to make sure that our race car is going really well. Um, which I think at this point we're working on. Um, I think we've made some pretty good inroads from the start of the year, but I still think we have a long way to go. Um, and obviously we need a lot of luck and we need a lot of support. So that's down to you guys. But um, hopefully soon, you know, we can, we can sort of get all those things in line. Um, we're working really, really hard. And I must admit, I'm super impressed with the team and how eager they are to improve, um, which is something that's really cool for me because coming from a Super 2 background, we don't really have the capability to, you know, change the cars in a short amount of time between race meetings like we do um, at, here at, at my team at WAU. So, Really, really excited about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll wait and see what we can do uh, later on in the season. Uh, Josh wants to know what your goals are in motorsport. What's your big picture goals? So for me, um, you know, as a young fellow, I always wanted to go to Formula One. Uh, but, you know, I guess I realised really quickly um, that without the family money that a lot of those people have, that's, that's really hard to do um, and, and near impossible. And, you know, when I raced in go-karts, I raced at the World Championships and raced against a lot of the guys that are going to be in Formula One and we've beaten a lot of them too. So, 
I felt like, you know, we were good enough to do it, but I, all our contacts were here in Australia, all our support was here in Australia. So for me, you know, and I've always been a, a car person in that, um, you know, tin top car person. So quickly realised that my goal actually is supercars and what I really want to do is supercars because that's what I've watched growing up. I didn't really watch Formula One growing up. It was all about supercars and Bathurst. So for me, my goal is to get to the top of supercars, which is going to be a tall enough order as it is. But for me, if I can have a long and successful career in supercars, I'll be, I'll be pretty stoked with that. And uh, just one final question to wrap it up. How is Midi's offering you more and what have they done for you over the journey? So Midi's have, um, you know, been with me and supported me since go-karts. So, um, you know, this is my sixth year driving a supercar, a race car at this point in time. So they sponsored me for my last two or three years in go-karts all the way through. Um, and, you know, that's absolutely, it's awesome of them because, you know, they're a, they're a family-owned, independent business. Um, and, you know, there's at the, at, right at the top of the tree in Midi's, there's a family, the Middendorf family, and they're the people that, have seen light in me um, and they've been so awesome to me and I, and you know they've been right behind me and we've had some really tough years in Super 2 as well um, and they have you know been by my side for the whole time so you know I, I can't thank them enough for what they've done for me um, you know they're absolutely amazing people and I can't thank everyone in the stores all the team all the team managers everyone they're so supportive of this movement and what we're doing um, and, and you know, Mobile One Midi's racing um, and my car and me, um, which is just absolutely awesome. And I mean, for me, for a kid coming from Darwin, I just, it's pretty hard to fathom the support that I've got just in my Midi's family, let alone all my other supporters as well. So um, yeah, well, I mean, far out. I just wouldn't be here, simple as that. As we, uh, as we wrap up from Midi's Narang here, what's a uh, final message for the, for the people out there before we uh, fly up to Darwin next week? Yeah, guys, look, I hope you're staying safe. Um, I hope you're watching the racing. Um, but yeah, obviously the biggest thing is I hope you guys are doing well. And, you know, if, if you're struggling, there's people to reach out to, um, you know, to try and help with that. Obviously, it's a pretty trying time for everybody. We're pretty lucky. We still get to go racing. But um, behind the scenes, you know, our guys are still doing it pretty tough. You know, everyone's away from home for an uncertain amount of time. All our guys in our team have got families at home, kids at home. Uh, my engineer, Terry, has got three kids at home that he's away from at the moment um, for an uncertain amount of time. It's going to be potentially two or three months so or even longer. So, um, you know, the biggest thing is just stay safe, make, you know, hug your loved ones um, and, you know, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy some racing.